Hey guys, it's Elhan again. Today we've got bisteki, in other words, Somali steak. My older sister taught me this recipe and I just thought it was deserving of everyone else to also have it because it's that good. Okay, so I'm using four very thinly sliced beef steak. I usually grab it in Somali butchers as I find it very hard to grab it in any other butcher. You want to grab yourself a bowl and add cow's milk. Yep, you heard that right, cow's milk. And add your steak right in. This is going to tenderize the meat for us. The amount of milk you use doesn't matter as long as the meat is fully submerged. You can use other forms of tenderizers such as yogurt, buttermilk, papaya, or even meat tenderizing powders. You want to cover it and leave it for 15 minutes and no more. Otherwise, the acid in the milk will break down the enzymes in the meat too much and it'll become difficult to cook with. Already, we can see how tender that meat looks. You want to shake off any excess excess milk and then place it in a bowl or a large plate. So we start off by drizzling it with a little bit of oil to allow the spices to stick. I then use half a teaspoon of some steak seasoning, a quarter teaspoon of chicken seasoning, and half a teaspoon of raisel hanout. You can substitute the raisel hanout for some cumin and coriander powder. You want to get in there with your hands and repeat the process on the other side, except we're using a little less amount of the spices and no chicken seasoning. I purposefully do not add any salt because the spices itself already contain a lot of salt. You can honestly play around with the spices, but one spice that I would say to always use when it comes to this dish is steak seasoning. And if you can't get your hands on any, then try to grab taco seasoning because the spices are very similar. You can't have Somali steak without having some veg and the veg that I like to use is some peppers. Any colours work but I particularly like red and green and you just want to slice them lengthways. Then go ahead and slice half a white onion. You can also use red onion for this and then one whole tomato. If I'm feeling fancy I might also add a potato. Grab yourself a frying pan and on medium heat add the veg. I don't add any oil because the veg is going to release a lot of water. Then I add a teaspoon of some chicken seasoning. At this point you all know how much I love chicken magic. If you feel like you need any oil just add a splash of water. It's healthier and cheaper but I like to cook the veg for about 10 minutes until they soften but don't soften too much. And I like to cook the veg first because I like it to retain its color. It just stays vibrant and it's much more prettier to look at. You want to return the pan back onto the stove on medium heat and add the steak one by one. We're not using any oil because we've already added the oil to the steak. Don't worry that we're just doing it one steak at a time. We are flash frying this, which means we're cooking it for less than two minutes each. As soon as one side gets enough color, you want to flip it immediately. And you want to do the same thing on the other side. Once it's got enough color, you want to take it off the pan, add a splash of water instead of oil, try to get as much of that flavor off the pan, and then go ahead and add your next steak. This method of flash frying the steak is what keeps the steak so soft and so tender. The longer you cook it, the tougher it will become. Just keep in mind that the steak is almost as thin as a piece of paper, so there's almost no chance of undercooking it. You can serve this amazing steak as it is, but we're gonna take it one step further. So you wanna get yourself four cloves of garlic. I'm just crushing it because it's easier to remove the skin this way. And then a handful of some fresh coriander. You want to crush it until it looks something like this. Honestly, one of my favorite smells. So take that mixture and add it back to that pan that we cooked the steak in. Add a tablespoon of soy sauce and a tablespoon of water and mix it really well, making sure to scrape the bottom of that pan because that's where all that flavor is. Continue to cook it on low heat and once you've got all that flavor off the pan, go ahead and add a teaspoon of butter. 
guys, the smell is unreal. For once all that butter melts away, you want to turn off the heat and then add the steak back in. This is literally my favorite part. Often people like to use the coriander and the garlic before we cook the steak, but I prefer it this way because you get a lot more flavor, it's a lot more fresh and it's just delicious. But look how soft and succulent that steak looks. It's absolutely delicious. What I like about this method is that you can in fact pre-prepare your steak and then when you're ready to eat it, just dip it in the hot sauce and you are ready to serve. And when I'm ready to serve, I just throw on all of that veg. If you want, you can quickly flash fry it in the same pan that we cook the steak in. And oh my God, look how soft that steak is. A baby could chew on it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. Until next time, guys, see ya.